Hey, welcome to this week's episode of Lumber Junkies TV. As you know, I went up to Alaska this year to, for, the, for my first trip yeah. up there. Uh, that Randy, was a good time. Yeah, Randy here took me out with his dad, Daryl, on the Kenai for some silvers. That was a blast. Yeah, that, that was good. You know, it, it was pretty slow fishing. My family started fishing on the Kenai in 1974, and, and Rocky coming to hang out, he got to hear all about the old time stories. It was, it yeah. was fun. Wasn't your dad like one of the first guys to put a drift boat yeah, on the Kenai? Yeah, him and his best friend, Hal Borg, were one of the first guys to put a drift boat there. And, and uh, Hal, who I grew up calling Uncle Hal, he actually grad, uh, graduated. He actually retired in 2007 as the longest running drift boat guy on the Kenai. Really? That's right, that's right. So we went to one of our old trusty spots and uh, we showed up a little late one night. You know, we drove over from Seward, actually after fishing for Halibut all yeah, day. Yeah. Yes, we were tired. Drove over from Seward, stayed at the Soldatna Inn. Uh, that's where I like to roll into. They let me, me and Sock down there stay there. Yeah, great so, place to stay. Check that out if you go fish the Kenai around Soldatna. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. So we uh, fished a little bit that evening. You know what's crazy is we got Sockeye, 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 yeah. and we were we were uh, back bouncing eggs in the, um, the Yakima Bay Spin and Glow, yeah. pink and black with the, which was hot or hot, ooh, real hot, real hot with the pink and my, mylar wings there. So yeah. uh, definitely get some of those. And, but yeah, you know it was fit, the first three fish that night. Well, all the fish that first day were yeah, all sockeye. Yeah, one silver. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But uh, then day number two, well, stay tuned. We'll show you all about day number two. That's won't right. We? All right, guys, stay tuned for more Lumper Junkies TV. We'll be right back. It's on! Lunker Junkies TV is brought to you by Bymark. Get ready for your season for less. Procure bait sense and cures. Ruthlessly effective. Lama glass rods. Fish with confidence. Yakima Bait Company. Home of the rooster tail. Chest to tackle. Venner of the sling blade. Bait buttons. Because presentation matters. BNR Tackle. Inventor of the Steelhead Holy Worm. Northwest Sportsman Magazine. Chock full of tips, tricks, and useful information. Fish Seward, Alaska, and Oregon Fishing Adventure. Power Drifter Boats, The Real Tech, and Hypnotic Custom Design and Graphics. We're on our way up here to do a little silver fishing and got to wait for the moose to cross. How cool is that? All right, we just got up here to the hole past the moose and Daryl, Randy's dad, just got hooked up here. We've had several hookups today. For some reason, they're kind of light hit. They're getting skin hooked. We haven't been able to get one to the boat yet, so see if we can pull this one off. Okay, I was just back bouncing eggs that we had caught out of the ocean the other day. Uh, cured up with some Procure, and they've been working really good. She's got some height to her. So we're back bouncing eggs on the Kenai for silver salmon. It's the end of August and the silvers are coming in pretty thick right now. Some of the issues I see when I'm guiding on back bouncing eggs, especially if you've never done it before, is finding the bottom, finding the bottom. One thing I recommend is that if you're having a hard time finding the bottom, go up to a, a heavy weight, you know, a three ounce or a four ounce where you can really get the feel where it's just bam, 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 
time and you can really know that you're on the bottom. And the objective to back bouncing, which is the rig that I've, I've got right here, I've got my spinning glow with a bead and my egg on there, my slider, my weight is on a slider, as you can see there. And what happens is, let's say the current's flowing this way. Here's my weight, okay? You're gonna set it down. Your spinning glow is holding your bait up off the bottom. You're gonna set it down, wait for a few seconds, and then lift, and then set, lift, and then set. You've always gotta know where the bottom is, and if you're having a hard time finding the bottom, up, up your weight a little bit. So basically what's happening is I'm fishing in free spool, okay, I'm on the bottom, I'm gonna, and my rod is almost straight out off of me. So then I'm gonna, with my reel in free spool, I'm gonna lift up slow and let line out, but I'm gonna leave my weight on the bottom. I'm gonna lift up slow, let line out, and then once I know I've got my rods back up at a 45 degree angle, I'm gonna put my thumb on the spool, not let line out, lift, set, lift, set, lift, set. I'm gonna walk that weight downstream until my rod is straight out in front of me again. And then I'm gonna take my spool, lift my thumb up a little bit, let a little bit of line out, put my thumb back on the spool, lift, set, lift, set, lift, set. If, you're, if your weight's off the bottom and you're just letting line out trying to find bottom, then odds are you've got too light of a weight. And the better you get at it, for example, I'm fishing with a one ounce weight right now, I'm not finding bottom till I'm almost 50 feet past the boat, but it's okay because I know I'm going to be able to feel it eventually. I'm using a very sensitive rod. I'm using the Ke Lama Glass Kenai Quick Series rod, which is and it's their pro bouncer. It's designed for back bouncing. It's got a solid graphite handle, so you can really feel everything that's going on down there in the rod, and that's extremely important. You've got to have a rod that's stiff enough when you're back bouncing to set the hook. So these fish are just gonna munch, munch, munch. It's a pretty light bite with coho. So you've gotta have a rod that's sensitive enough that you can feel that weight bouncing, but that is strong enough that when you rip back, you can really set that hook. Let's see if we can get a good demo going in here. So there I'm in free spool. Go down, there's bottom. Now I'm gonna hold my thumb, lift, set, Lift, set, now I'm on bottom. If I lift again, I'm going to lose it. So I'm going to let some line out. Lift, set, just like that. There he is. Fish on. Yeah. Nothing like making a phone call and hooking a fish. Big silver, big silver. And he's got another fish on here. Uh, Joe, one's in the water there. Would you bring him in off another fish? I thought I was about to say fish on while I was on the phone. <laughs> That's why I love some fish. I like it. Oh, that's a big. <laughs> that's a big. Yeah. Chrome to the dome, still packing sea lice. Right here. Got another nice co on here, Ren. <laughs> <laughs> 
pick one up. How'd you like that net job? Nice net job. Thank you, sir. Good one. Better than my first one. Man, look at that hook. All right, so we're having a, they're biting really light today. So we put on a stinger to just give us that little bit of extra advantage. And this one actually got both, which is actually kind of rare. I've, I've actually I don't think I've ever seen that. Uh, but another another thing uh, you hear Randy talk about all the time putting fresh eggs on. I was running an old wore out sack of eggs for quite a while. He quit biting it, so we we freshened up the eggs a little bit in just a matter of seconds. Nailed it. That's a nice silver. Nice silver, yeah. Nice still shot. In 1977, I decided to resign from a company that I was working for and take up fishing. So, Hal Borg and I, we came up to the Kenai River and this hole that we're sitting in right now was one of my favorites then and still today. Well, it's been a long, many years and I'm back here fishing on the Kenai, my favorite hole. And I just got one more fish to go. Hey guys, Randy Wells, Lumber Junkies TV. You see me in a few episodes here and there. And in case you didn't know, I'm also a full-time fishing guide in both Oregon and Alaska. In Alaska, you can visit my website at fishsewardalaska.com. Based out of Seward, chasing halibut, lingcod, rockfish, and salmon. We're also based out of Southern Oregon in the fall for fall salmon and winter steelhead fishing. OregonFishingAdventure.com. Check it out. If you'd ever like to do a great fishing trip, let me know. Now stay tuned for more Lunker Junkies TV. When you know you're going to smoke fish, you might as well get it prepared at the fish cleaning station. It's one less step you got to deal with when you get home. You know, as a guide in Alaska and Oregon, I get a ton of questions about my smoked salmon recipe. It's very, very simple. I've got a little bit going on in the smoker right now. And we've got some fresh silver salmon that Rocky and I and my dad Daryl got yesterday on the Kenai. So I'm going to kind of go over it with you real quick. This is the campground way to smoke salmon. I prefer to do it, get prep all my meat in strips like this right here. So when I'm filleting my fish and I know I'm going to smoke it, I get it all ready right then and there at the fish cleaning station. Bring it home, okay? So there's all, all of our smoked salmon. So it's real important to use a non-iodized salt. I prefer to use a sea salt. And with the amount of fish that we kept, we kept five coho the other day, filleted those up, about this much fish right here. It's probably 12 pounds of fish. I'm gonna use two cups of, of uh, sea salt. So I get that in there. I like to use a lot of the teriyaki. Now, the reason why I can get by with two cups of sea salt here for the curing process is because the teriyaki's got a lot of sea, a lot of salt in it as well, so that's going to help cure it up.
pour in my first bottle and start stirring. Another way that you can do this is if you have a, uh, a big pot, you can put this on the stove and bring it to a slow boil and that'll really help to dissolve all the salt. And then you just have to make sure that you let it drop below room temperature again before you start curing because you don't want to cook your smoked salmon. The next thing I like to add is brown sugar. The brown sugar is important, but it's not important in the curing process. It's important in the flavor process. And my dad's a diabetic, and I know some of you at home are diabetics as well. So I try to use a minimal amount of brown sugar as possible for the, the amount of fish that I'm using. This little bit of brown sugar is going to help to caramelize it, but it's not enough to affect a diabetic diet for the most part, unless obviously you can't have any sugar at all. Then you could just skip the sugar process. All right, so after you've added the brown, after you've added your brown sugar, you still got some sea salt in there. And you'll see that I've got some more ingredients here. Those are gonna go in. I'm just gonna give this a little bit more of a stir. Start breaking the salt and the sugar down. Now, might not be a secret ingredient, but it's one of my favorite things to use at home. Worcestershire sauce. Don't be shy with it either. Remember I said don't be shy. empty. I like to use a lot of cure, a lot of brine for this process. I want to make sure that every little piece of fish has the ability to, to get its, its justice. Some of you may like it, some of you may not. I think it works awesome on smoked salmon. And it is kind of a, a little special additive, a little liquid smoke. It doesn't take much. gonna get plenty of smoke flavor from your smoker, but the liquid smoke helps it soak into those fish pieces. All right, I call this the campground method, um, and the reason so is, number one, I'm at fish camp here in Alaska, number two, when I'm doing this, I'm doing it outside of a fifth well a lot of times when I'm in on the Chetco or the Elk or the Sixes down in Oregon, or I'm on the Kenai, and we don't have big fridges in these fifth wheels and these RVs, so I call this the campground method, because what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take my fish and I'm going to put it in this garbage sack. I've already got my kitchen sink in my RV layered with ice. And what I'm going to do is brine in this garbage sack. I'm going to leave it on ice in the kitchen sink. That way I can shake it, shake it, shake it. It's only a 24-hour process and it works awesome. Plus you don't have to worry about spilling a bunch of fish. Brine, smoked salmon brine in your refrigerator. So I still got a little bit of my salt and sugar right there. So the next step is I'm gonna tie this in a knot, but as you can see, I'm gonna leave some space, right? I'm gonna double layer this bag. I'm gonna put layer ice in my in my sink of my um, RV or my house. I do this in my house a lot. I'm gonna double layer this bag because there's no better way, in my opinion, to really, really be able to move that brine around with that fish put this on ice in the sink and about every hour I'm going to go over, I'm going to shake the bag, spin the bag, rock the bag, make sure that every piece gets marinated. Hey guys, hope you're enjoying this uh, week's episode of Lunker Junkies TV. Yesterday I got my fish all brined up. I was telling you about the uh, salmon camp process here. Now I've got it on the drying racks. A very, very, two very important steps. One, Make sure you rinse your fish before you put it on the drying racks. Rinse all that brine off of there. Two, I'm going to paper towel it and I'm going to let it air dry for an hour. 
after that, I'm gonna put it in the smoker and I'm gonna smoke it until it's the sweat starts to really push out on it till it gets, uh, you know, I call it sweating anyway when the fat all rises to the surface. As soon as that's done, I'm gonna take and put it in a Ziploc bag, roll that bag up tight so there's no air. I'm gonna put it directly in the refrigerator, straight from the smoker to the refrigerator. And what that does is that heat inside that bag keeps that fish um, to continue to cure and smoke in that bag and you're going to get a great glaze on that fish. It's going to be real moist but still have a, a, a real good smoked salmon texture and flavor. Well now that you guys are all ready to go out and catch some salmon after hopefully learning some techniques from this week's episode, the final product, the man candy, let's see what we get. Had it on the smoker for about six hours with the Bradley smoker. You know, everybody does a little bit different. When it's on the smoker, you know it's done when it breaks perfectly apart. As you can tell with this style of smoking, it's very moist and it's good. We'll see y'all next week. Stay tuned, more Lunker Junkies TV. We'll be right back. Lunker Junkies TV is brought to you by Bymark. Get ready for your season for less. Pro Cure Bait Sense and Cures, ruthlessly effective. Lama Glass Rods, Fish with Confidence, Yakima Bait Company, Home of the Rooster Tail, Dust to Tackle, Inventor of the Sling Blade, Bait Buttons, because presentation matters, BNR Tackle, Inventor of the Steelhead Holy Worm, Northwest Sportsman Magazine, chock full of tips, tricks, and useful information, Fish Sewer Alaska and Oregon Fishing Adventure, Power Drifter Boats, The Real Tech, and Hypnotic Customs Design and Graphics. Hey guys, Randy Wells uh, with Lunker Junkies TV. You know I own my charter service over at the Seward, but also guide on the Upper Kenai. And when I'm in Kenai fishing, I recommend all my clients stay over at the Soldata Inn. They've always taken good care of me. Even before I was with Lunker Junkies TV, they, they've taken good care of me. We came over last night, Rocky, myself, and even Sockeye. They've got pet-friendly rooms. They've got large rooms for large groups. This particular room that we stayed in last night has a full kitchen. It's a lock-in apartment, two bedrooms, three beds. All the couches fold out. So check it out. So dot the end. More Lunker Junkies TV. We'll be right back. Born to be fishermen. We were born to be fishermen. So come along with me on Lunker Junkies. On Lunker Junkies. We're locker junk.